you take chapter 22 of Genesis, Jehovah gives this direction. And any of you that are fathers or you're listening, and I, you don't have to be a father to be touched by this, obviously, as uh, you love Jehovah and you love Jesus. But he says in verse 2, Take please your son, your only son, whom you so love. Oh, yeah, he knew. Oh, Abraham sure loves Isaac. And this is remarkable. He knows he loves him so much, and what's he tell him to do? Sacrifice him. So we, we don't have all the, or any record of any feelings that Abraham had during all this. We get some indication of some things going on here, but uh, those of you that have ever had a son or sons, the impact here is just phenomenal. He did go all the way with the knife, and he had actually in mind and heart committed the sacrifice. But Jehovah, you know, after he reached out with the knife and everything's in motion, Jehovah had the angel call out, Abraham, Abraham, just in time. That stopped the whole thing. And Abraham said, here I am. And then he told him in verse 12, do not harm the boy. Oh, uh, how did he feel? Talk about a relief. And all this time, before, Isaac's wondering, you know, we got this all set up. Where's the sheep? <laughs> I don't know. They must have had some interesting conversations after these events. Now, you think that uh, they're not going to enjoy a sensational family reunion? Oh, my. And then when they find out, because they didn't know, they, heard certain things, Jehovah, he went all the way and allowed the sacrifice with his son. Ah, oh, see that pain, a lot of pain. We've been watching governing body member Tony Morris giving evidence of his profound wisdom and knowledge at the 2022 annual meeting in his talk titled, They Will Be Sensational. It will be sensational when Isaac and Abraham are resurrected in the paradise. And it's going to make for an awkward conversation for the reasons Tony has explained. What can I say? Tony Morris is speaking here from the very unique position of being both a governing body member and a father. He is, to my knowledge, the only governing body member with any sort of parental experience. And quite frankly, that shows <laughs> when we think about some of the anti-child rhetoric that's come out of the governing body in recent years on JW broadcasts and that sort of thing. But Tony Morris looks upon the account in Genesis 22 seemingly with unending admiration for Abraham. He thinks it was brilliant that Abraham was willing to slaughter his son Isaac, whom he loved. He thinks that's an example of superior morals. That's Tony Morris for you. I just want to contrast the words you've just heard from Tony Morris with a different source. And before I play this clip, this clip is not a Jehovah's Witness clip. It's actually one of my favorite all-time speakers and authors who has since died. And this clip will contain some swearing. It will, in fact, contain the F word. I try to keep swearing of any kind out of these rebuttals for obvious reasons. But when it comes to the F word in particular, I think there are a 
few better examples of where that particular word is warranted than in the following clip. The second uh, thing I live for is, um, if not exactly passing on my genes, taking part in activities that might allow those genes to be passed on. <laughs> and not... <clears throat> and uh, not scorning the, the three delightful children who result, who are everything to me and who are my only chance of a, even a glimpse of a, a second life, let alone an immortal one. And I'll tell you something, if I was told to sacrifice them to prove my devotion to God, if I was told to do what all monotheists are told to do, and admire the man who said, yes, I'll gut my kid to show my love of God, I'd say, no, fuck you. <laughs> Thank and you, so should you, and the religions that say you should admire infanticide as but proof of the love of God have no claim, no claim at all to be preaching ethics, let alone morality. I hope you can understand why I've played this clip. I don't have too much to add to it. How do you refute that? Anyone, especially who's been a parent, who's felt just the overwhelming feelings of maternal or paternal love for their child will relate to those words. And I don't think you even need to be a parent to understand where Hitch, the late Christopher Hitchens, is coming from here. How can you possibly admire the man who would do that? who would say, yeah, I think I'm going to kill my kid because of voices in my head. You don't think about it that way as a Jehovah's Witness. And I'm sure the same can be said for all of the monotheisms, for all of the various denominations of Christianity. And yet it's embedded in our traditions, isn't it? We're supposed to think Abraham was acting in a rational, admirable manner when in fact the actions described in Genesis 22 were plainly barbaric.